Welcome to Delling Pool, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here is the podcast host, James Delling Pool. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Delling Pool, my first podcast for Breitbart on Podcast One. The show is named after me, James Delling Pool, and you are totally going to love it because... Well, let me tell you a bit about myself and where we're going to go with this thing. Here is some of the stuff that I like. I like fox hunting, property made with actual tea leaves, Led Zeppelin. My uncle was actually at school with Robert Plant, the lead singer. I like Game of Thrones, obviously. I like Shakespeare. I like military history. I've actually written two books set in World War II, two novels. I love wild swimming in lakes and rivers and and the sea, obviously. I like lamb's liver. I live in a house surrounded by by sheep, and I see those little lambs frolicking and frisking and gambling, and I think, mmm, I would love to eat your livers one day. I like gin. I I like the drunk that gin gives you. Obviously, I have to drink it made with proper boutique Ponzi tonic like Fentimans or Fever Tree, and I like, I, like, I like a quality gin, but gin gets me there every evening without fail. Curries. I'm really into my curries. I make a mean Rogan Josh. Private jets. I don't have a private jet, but I flew in one once, and I thought it was great, and I thought I will do this again if I ever can. Glastonbury Festival I like. Weed, obviously. Andrew Marvell's poem to his coy mistress is my favourite poem of all time, but I like poetry generally and literature generally because I studied English at Oxford, so I'm frightfully clever that way. I like doing stupid, dangerous things like diving with great white sharks with a cage or jumping 300 foot off cliffs on a rope like I did in Zimbabwe the other day. I like going on safari, I like skiing, but I can't afford either of those. I like surfing, but I'm really crap at it. I like playing bridge. Again, I'm not an expert, but it's a good game. Really, I'm a, I'm a veritable renaissance man. Now let me tell you about some of the stuff I hate, so you get an idea of the dark side of my character. I can't stand weak, pissy coffee. I really can't stand social justice warriors. I don't like Bruno Mars. I was once in New York and I upset this little girl because Bruno Mars was giving a live concert in the street and I made disparaging remarks about her idol and her dad glared at me in a a really horrid way like, you've just ruined my daughter's dreams. And I suppose I had. I hate wind turbines, solar panels, pretty much any form of renewable energy except maybe hydropower if you're in Norway or somewhere suitable like that. I hate socialism, communism, feminism, pretty much every ism. I can't stand virtue signalling. I do not like the music of Steely Dan. I think it's chin-stroking intellectual tosh. I can't stand environmentalists. I That guy on the Kardashians, the really annoying one, I, I totally hate him. Um, in fact, I hate most of the Kardashians, apart from that one who's fancy, but what's her name? Um, I fancy Kendall Jenner, but the the, the rest you can keep. I loathe the European Union, and one of the best moments in my political life was when Britain voted for Brexit recently. I don't like whiny liberals in whole food cafes. I hate whales, manatees, polar bears. I want to kill them all. Actually, that last bit's a lie, just to wind up the greenies. I I do actually quite like nature and animals and stuff, but I can't stand bleeding hearts who keep telling you how much they like animals and nature and stuff. Good. Now you totally know who I am and what I'm like. Let me tell you a bit about my plans for this show. The idea is that it's going to be, well, I'm I'm actually not sure what it's going to be yet. I mean, swearing, for example. Apparently, I'm allowed to swear and cuss on this show, but I haven't decided how much swearing I'm going to do or if I'm going to do it at all. I, I suppose I ought to give a trigger warning if, I, if I'm about to say fuck or something, because obviously you don't want to upset sort of um, faint of heart listeners. Guests. Am I going to have famous people on my show all the time? Well, no. It's a chore getting hold of them, and pretty soon you run out of suitable celebrities. And anyway, 
they're not always that interesting. So instead, what I'm going to do is mix it up a bit. Some of my guests will be famous, some not. And if I'm really des- desperate any week, I, I guess I'll bring out one of my brothers and do them instead. Here is definitely what I want to do, though. I want the show to be like a conversation, not an interview. So you're going to be sitting in your car or doing the ironing or, or watching your maid do the ironing or, or, or snorting coke from the buttocks of your favorite whore or whatever it is you do when you listen to, to podcasts. And there I'll be in the background having a chat, being witty, being interesting, teaching you stuff, making you laugh or whatever. And at the end, you'll think, what happened? I want more of this. I want James Dellingpole and his friends in my life forever because they're such damn charming company. Well, that's the idea. Anyway, you are definitely going to love my first guest, I guarantee. She's had what you might call a a checkered career. She was thrown out of the British Army just as she was about to pass out as an officer because she had an epileptic fit. She got to the last round of The Apprentice, that's the UK version, not the Donald Trump version, only to tell the boss, Lord Sugar, you're fired. She ate minced up kangaroo testicles, or or, or similar, on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. She gained and lost three stone, that's about 42 pounds, to prove her point that fatties are not helpless victims of a condition beyond their control. She offended the whole of Scotland and got interviewed by their police for tweeting rudely about sweaty jocks. She was investigated by the police again for writing a column in The Sun calling migrants cockroaches and feral humans who are spreading like the norovirus. She was accused of being racist for tweeting, Gypsies are not travellers. Travellers are people that commute to work or go on holiday. Gypsies are feral humans. We have no duty to them. I could go on. But instead, I'm going to say welcome to my first guest, Daily Mail online columnist, Katie Hopkins, whom I totally adore because just like me, she's loathed and detested by all the right people. She has no filter and she totally speaks her mind. One more thing before we start. If you like this show, please follow me on Twitter, at James Dellingpole. And even more importantly, subscribe to this show, Dellingpole, on iTunes, and give it the five-star rating you totally know it deserves. This is Dellingpole. More to come after the break with my special guest, Katie Hopkins. This is Dellingpole. A Breitbart.com podcast. Here once again is James Dellingpole. The really annoying thing about this is that I thought one thing I don't want to do is start my first Breitbart podcast <laughs> being a kind of stereotypical, um, angry sort of stuff about Islam, stuff about general rage for the modern world. I thought I'll, I'll, I'll take the reader, in, uh, sorry, the listener rather. See, I'm a print journalist. Take the listener in there gently. And here I am talking to Katie Bloody Hopkins, who is like a female version of me, except you're not... We've established... With you're more not, hair. You're not, really, you're not really a girl, are you, anyway? <laughs> well, that's... So we've just met in the hairdressers, where I was trying to have a hairdo, although you interrupted and came in asking what sort of... They offered you a coffee, graciously. Yeah. Then you proceeded to interrogate them about the quality of their coffee and when they, whether they did particular types I of said, coffee. I said, did they do a flat... Normal behaviour in a hairdresser's, just... But they did ask. They did ask me what kind of coffee I liked, and I, I, I ideally, they meant I like, cafe, I like they a flat white. Latte, or do you want a cappuccino? That's what they meant. That right. was the extent of their ambitions okay. for you, Dolly. Anywho, you did point out at the hairdressers that I was more or less a bloke, and I would say that I completely concur. I definitely am more of a man, and that's why I think I get on better with boys than I do with girls generally. Yeah, it, and is that why women hate you, or do, do they hate you? And women tend to hate me when I take their husbands. Yeah. Which, oh, yes. <laughs> How often do you do that? Kind of, well, you know, mostly on a Thursday. Every other, let's yeah. call it bi-weekly. The girls are always, 
feels always bit, difficult about that. A bit funny about that. So I just wrote a piece yesterday about sort of Angelina Jolie and the fact that I side with Brad. And of course, you know, for all spinsters everywhere, all divorcees, all women that have ever been left behind by their husband who's run off with his secretary, as indeed mine did, uh, it's a sort of triumph, this whole Brangelina thing. Yes. Because it's this idea that what goes round comes around. You see, she took Brad and now she's being, you know, he's run off with someone else. People love it. There is jubilation in the tabloid masses. Do you think there is a man in the world that gives a toss about, about Brangelina and yes. the breakup? Yes. Oh, really? Loads. In BBC Broadcasting House, they love it. So their favourite paper of choice, Daily Mail, they can't get enough of the sidebar of shame and they hide their Daily Mails inside their copy okay, of the garden. But, but is that professional interest? Is, is that them thinking, we need to reach no, out to the female audience? They, they're actually interested. BBC don't reach out to anyone outside of the metropolitan elite and Islington as you know darling mm. it's just them with their sordid little fascinations it's like people that stalk my Twitter feeds but don't actually follow it's the same thing they can't be seen Lurkers. to follow so they just lurk in the shadows having a moment to themselves shuffling about into their tr- trouser department but, you see that's the one area of things that I couldn't um, imitate you and in every other respect I, th- I find your opinions are pretty much accord with mine <laughs> but when you have to write an article uh, caring about Brad Pitt and Angelina. Oh. Who's, she's not. She's not even hot, is she? Uh, no, I would well, that's not. I would thing. not shag if you paid me, <laughs> Angelina no, Jolie. Just so we're clear, so I will suggest ideas for articles each week, yeah. and they get yes or no. You know that, and that's absolutely fine. So yesterday I said I'll write about Brangelina, Angelina, Brangelina, whatever the hell they're called, because. Yeah. I have the experience of nicking someone's husband. And they and love then, that. They love that. And then him leaving me. And, of that. course, that's, that's all it was, of sort of pinning on, if, if you've done it to someone else, you know, Angelina, stop being this perfect pants, stop being a sort of porn, soft porn version of Lady Di. Don't be a kind of low-rent Amal Clooney get a grip. Because for many women, Angelina is kind of a grating, irritating individual with kind of lips more full than my freezer. Yes. That's how I felt about her for a long time. So for, that, for me to write that is fun. Was it the most read article in America for the Daily Mail Online for an entire day? Yeah. And that entourage of, of multicoloured children that she's yeah. picked up on the way. Yeah. Her, for what? Yeah, Rainbow what, Nation. What's, what, as she waves what, through the What's airports. that about? I know. She sort of collects children in the way that we collect key rings when we go travelling. And look, here we are talking now fascinatedly I mean, about, about... This yeah, is the and, truth and of life, and we shouldn't pretend to be more noble than this. It's always my big thrust. I'm not sure that I've ever pretended to be noble. True. Um, although I am, uh, and probably you feel the same... I do feel sometimes like I'm on a mission to save the world from, it, from its own <laughs> yeah. stupidity. I feel that way. I feel that way. There's something like that you tweeted the other day, which I, I want to move on to in a, in a, in a, in a moment. Um, but you know that speech in... Well, you probably don't, because I bet you don't even know Lord of the Rings. Oh, do. I read it when oh, I was okay, young. Okay, okay. So there's a moment where um, Frodo <laughs> says to... Gandalf, um, he says, Look, why do I have to go, I, 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 I translate loosely, <laughs> yes, why, am I, why am I having to go through this shit, why, why have I got to go to Mordor to yeah. carry, carry the ring and, and chuck it into Mount Doom, um, I'd so much rather have had an easy life. And Gandalf says, sagely, it is not given to us to choose the time, etc, etc. And of course, when he said this, um, uh, when he wrote this, Tolkien had had the experience of serving in the, in the First World War, which he didn't want to do. I, I mean, like, like almost anyone who, uh, who fought in the, the, the First World War, apart from, apart from maybe Rupert Brooke, I think <laughs> most people <laughs> went into that war I thinking, think I know where this shit, is going. What, what the hell's going on? And You're equating yourself to someone fight, fighting trench warfare in yes. the First World War. Yeah, James, to- I find that totally am. improbable. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I know. But we've got to do what we've got to do. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not a Superman. You're a whimsical but, pen but holder. No, don't ever, ever accuse me of whimsy. I do not do whimsy. Hugo Rifkin in The, the Spectator does whimsy. The ever lifted is a Parker pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I can take it. I can take it. But I could, I'm sure I could wield um, a... <laughs> a what? A kitchen knife? <laughs> the rifles are quite light these days. <laughs> Automatic rifles. Yeah, yeah. SA80. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I could maybe I wouldn't even do that. Maybe I'd be, I'd be piloting a drone. But the, my point being is that fight. I would much rather be a hedge fund manager, completely out of the public eye, just have, driving a Range Rover Sport, having a trophy ro- wife, and, and a mistress. <laughs> and no, no, no sh- sh- give me a chance. And, uh, and, and a mistress. Um, and all, the, all, all the, the stuff that goes with the upper middle class the, in lifestyle in this modern world. Instead, 
I'm earning shit money. Um, exposing myself to, to risk by saying stuff that other people know in their hearts to be true, but won't fucking say because they're cowards. And you... In terms of exposing yourself to risk, I'm interested. Do, in, in what sense does that uh, have repercussions for you? So have you had legal action taken against you? You don't have to be specific, clearly. Or have you had a police intervention against you? I've... The worst thing... No, 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 no. I, I, I've become particularly interested recently in the war on third wave... Fem- third wave feminism is it called what, 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 whatever that, whatever these SJWs so call themselves the I'm interested in the culture wars and everything is the culture wars it, the environmentalist nonsense is the culture wars the, 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 this whole feminist thing is the culture wars black lives matter is the culture wars because as Andrew Breitbart said politics is downstream from culture so it doesn't really matter whether we've currently got a conservative government in, 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 in the UK, but we're not that's not what's going to affect our lives. What really is going to affect our lives is the kind of issues like what you can say mm-hmm. uh, in, in public, on, on the internet, whether freedom of speech that, and this seems to be controlled by, by people outside the, the government machine. Um, so I think the culture wars matter a, a great deal. Um, Anyway, you asked me. You asked me whether I. I was wondering if there was an answer. Yeah, no, there is an answer. There is an answer. Um, about when I was blogging at the Telegraph, a journalist called Suzanne Moore, uh, who's who writes fairly feisty, kind of leathery, she leathery middle-aged woman stuff she has for to the. Be angry. Anyone born with red she hair is angry. She recently wrote. Angry. She wrote a piece for the New Statesman, saying. Okay, I finally admit it. I hate men, all men. They're awful. I can't stand them. Can you imagine the shit a man would get if he wrote, wrote that piece? I mean, he, his career would be over. Suzanne Moore gets applauded for this. Anyway, I, I tweeted. Um, I tweeted. I mean, it was it was it was dis- disobliging, but it wasn't exactly. It, it <laughs> wasn't. What was the it wasn't what you call it. it Stop prefacing. Toby Toby Young mm-hmm. had written an article, um, completely taking a apart some bollocks she'd written about education and so i said i said at toadmaster which is toadmeister which is toby's um twitter handle his handle um gives suzanne moore such a seeing to she won't walk for months (laughs) something like that so so yeah i mean sort of crudely misogynistic insult but nothing Nothing, that's 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 kind of just no 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 harm harmless stuff the next thing I knew, I was being not only assailed by all the kind of Suzanne Moore Easters, but also threat, getting threatening letters from the Guardian lawyers oh. um, for having made a rape threat. A rape. Oh. So suddenly it had been upgraded to a rape threat. The next thing I knew, I was being sort of hauled up before my editor on the Telegraph at the time. Uh, a senior civil servant was trying to use her influence to get... I mean, the head of the civil service, or, who's obviously a feminist, an old, old childhood friend of mine, was trying to get me sacked. All on the basis of something that I'd written in, what, maybe 10 120, seconds? Well, 120 characters. 100, yeah, so you know, e- exactly. And I thought, this is a real problem. I was lucky. I didn't get my career ruined by this, by this woman, but, although that's what she wanted. Um, but there were lots of people out there who are having their careers ruined. Tim, Sir Tim Hunt the yeah, Nobel shocking. Prize winning shocking. scientist who was yeah and then um, they later found that he should be reinstated at which point he said I really don't want my job back which is a tragedy but certainly for me I think the same story is true people say to me what's your long term plan you know what do you want to go into politics what is it and, and for me I've realised and recognised it isn't about that at all and it never was it sort of evolved into this kind of fight for the right to speak out and to encourage others to still have an opinion you would be interesting in politics but in a way you would hopeless. feel you would be okay. hopeless you couldn't make nicey nice with people I wouldn't read from my script sh- uh, script sheet you would, would not follow the party say. whip you would absolutely be I'd always be out of order liability I yeah. would not be allowed anywhere to say anything which is the opposite of what I try and do and that's why for me the privilege of having the column that I have and the privilege of having a seat uh, at a radio station is I call that open season so it's open season for anyone to say absolutely what they want without fear of reprisal and if someone wants to call me morally abhorrent a racist or whatever they've got absolutely the right to have the airtime and we make sure they have that and that's me kind of fighting my good fight but um in a sort of reciprocal way i've also had my share of you know the head of the un saying that i was the single biggest danger to um 
human rights in Europe. Oh, no. About a column, oh, okay. I'm words. Don't make me jealous. I've got, I've got all big in my trousers I now. <laughs> I've, got, I've been arrested and interviewed under caution by the Major Crime and Homicide Command from the Met Police for that same column. Uh, and I've had litigation. There's litigation against me. At Remind the me what terrible things you said in this column. I, because uh, as a child, one is taught that the only animal that might, or creature, that might survive a nuclear holocaust is a cockroach. Now, that may indeed be a huge fabrication because who knows what might survive a ho- nuclear holocaust. Either who, and anyway. Mm-hmm. I suggested that migrants crossing the Med had a similar level of resilience to a cockroach, at which point, of course, other people, including the Society for Black Lawyers, will recognise there isn't a Society for White Lawyers because that would be white privilege all over. Um, The Society for Black Lawyers made a complaint because they said that I was likening um, migrants uh, to the to Rwandan genocide. I was inciting Rwandan genocide, and that got taken. Which you were obviously, obviously, mm-hmm, obs, obs. That got taken because, and the policeman told me this with the tape recorder going. We have to refer this to the CPS because it's from the Society of Black Lawyers, and that's what I'm up against. Yes, the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service. I, I think deserves a, a whole bloody episode of, of this well, they show. They must be sick as well because they, they're being referred stuff because nobody's got the balls prior to them to stand up and say, no, that's nonsense. And but th- out. they surely take their guidelines from the head of this CPS, who is currently Alison Saunders, Correct. who is a feminazi social Correct. justice warrior and who's obsessed with race issues. And as you'll appreciate, the incentive at the moment from police force is to increase the level of hate crimes that are reported. So there's no incentivised sort of pattern of behaviour for solving or helping prevent real hate or, or, or real crimes it's even. absolutely targeted around increased reporting levels and that's why we see increased reporting levels. Yes. In my opinion. We c- I, I want to talk to you in a moment about the, the Gaza case. You know, oh, about with, with Paul, his, Paul um, Gascoigne the, with, the his racist, with his racist with his racist joke. But yeah. so just going back, I, I just want to be truly jealous. Was it really the head of the UN? Mm. That, that the head of the UN, UNHR, so Human Rights, and he highlighted a Can you remember his name? I wouldn't have had no. him. Even, would no be, one knows would anybody's name. I would be interested to have ever known, other than he stood up, made a speech, and cited my son column and 600 words as the sole reason that Europe was at war and divided. So when you get called up, to, the, to be interviewed by the police. You'd do, invited. Do you invited. And, and, and how long does that take? Of your well, you're invited, time? and of course you would uh, understand that, that that is very clear. You're invited, but were you not to show up, you'll be arrested in your home. Oh, OK. So, and that's happened with three or four police force now. Devon and Cornwall, um, Scottish police, because I called Scottish people something rhyming with sweaty knocks. You said jocks? Well, I used the wrong term. What is the correct, what is the correct cockney rhyming for sweaty... Bollocks. It's either socks or j- jocks, mocks. I used the wrong word on a tweet. That got me. That got me uh, a call to be interviewed under court. But you, the autocorrect could have done that for you. I mean, what, is it, this is extraordinary, isn't it? I was that in people... Australia at the time, and they said they were going to extradite me to the UK for questioning. This is insane, Katie. Mm. I mean, even that you are Katie Hopkins. You are kind of queen uber troll. No, I don't think so, actually. I'm just saying what other people think, and I'm not that frightened to phrase it in a pithy way that gets an audience. So, for example, the tweet that I've put up this morning that now has, I think, 3,000 retweets is about the fact that last night at a protest over the shooting of a black man, another black man... Read it out. Read out your tweet. It was good. Okay. I, 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 I did see it earlier. We'll have to find it. Hold oh, on. OK. One, one moment. It won't take long. Although, obviously, I'm a little bit geriatric in my use of uh, Twitter. People would be surprised. Yeah. But here we go. So, there's more. Look there. New yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, here we go. So, black man shot by another black man during a protest of the shooting of a black man by a black cop. My white privilege means I simply don't understand. And, that, and then that kicks off all... Well, 1,500 that, retweets, 2,600 likes, because that's the message people know isn't being said. A black guy shot another black guy at a protest about a black guy being shot. That is madness, and no one can say it. Yes, it is absolutely bizarre, isn't it, that, that people like you and me, and there are not many of us... No, there's um, more than you think. There's 52. N- the 52. Basket of deplorables. 52 people. The Brexiteers. No, 52%. 48, 52. Oh, that's oh no, no, no. I, I, I agree that's our, that's our audience yeah. out there. Um, and actually, before I get on to my point, I was struck in the, in the hairdressers just now. You've, I've just seen you having your hair cut and coloured. Yes, pink. And, 
And okay, so there was. <laughs> is so, it nice? So there was, is it nice? It's fantastic. You look lovely, you know, Katie. You look absolutely radiant. Um, the the um, there was your your gay hairdresser. Yes, love him. And then there was your what? The hair colour a girl? She's the no. She's the stylist. So she cuts. She's hair. the she's stylist. Like okay, okay. So talking to those two, I felt that we were connecting with the real world mm. that doesn't get rep- the, 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 mm. not BBC world. Oh, yeah. I could say sexist stuff about women and the girl did not bat an eyelid. Oh, no. I could say stuff about gays and the gay man hunting, did not give it a toss. Give a t- no. He's the most liberal a person you could ever wish to meet um, but equally he's very forceful about what, how he feels and this about is, things. This is the real world. People um, or should make a decision one way or the other and he's absolutely gay um, and you know they're, they're fantastic. I was suggesting to you <clears throat> that you should have had insurance because if you're going to go hunting, which I completely approve of, and fall off your horse, it's not entirely my fault to pay for the ambulance to come and pick up your soft form. This from is the a, floor, Katie, this, uh, this is a marginal. In, uh, look, I know you want to ride this particular hobby horse. You and I would both probably abolish the NHS and then the, then, it would be, the, then it would be sorted. But I'm already pay, paying for private healthcare, so then I'm also subsidising some other fat person who ate their way through the fridge. We can destroy hit. the NHS and we can talk about fox hunting on another occasion. That's the we point. don't, yeah. It's going to the hairdressers doing my supermarket shop, walking my children around places. Those are all the places I love to be the most because they, to me, sit with the people I speak to and for and with. And also, actually, I, 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 have you ever hung out with Nigel Farage? I would choose not to. No, no he's all right. He's re- no, he's no, I wouldn't go near him. OK. Anyway, going around with... If you hang out with, with Nigel Farage, as I have done, you find that the kind of people that you have, you have just praised come up to him, ordinary people, and they, well, the, audience, they I get, totally. I've just seen to- Nigel in action and how he wouldn't even let Susan Evans on the stage at the UKIP conference because he has to hold the limelight. I'm not a fan of that. Nigel's got issues, is- issues definitely, definitely. Even but when UKIP have a fresh start, new leader, and he should be backing that party, he still has to be a distraction by pretending to jump about in his pants. Nigel needs to really grow up, so you shouldn't support him. Okay. Moving on along. These are our people. These, yes, are, these, are. these are our people. And wasn't it wonderful? When we woke up on the morning of June the twenty fourth, I didn't wake up. I never went. And to bed. we realised that we have got our country. We got our country back. I jumped around. I was in Cannes on the back of a massive yacht. It was an advertiser thing for the Daily Mail, and I and it was all up on a big screen. And I was texting Jeremy Vine as if he was in control of it, going, "Come on!" And then we won. And I was the most elated. And then I had to fly back to England and hide my delight because everyone was so angry. All Why? were marching around with their elbows out at right angles to their body on their phones like they do in their cross yeah. because because they kept saying well what a bunch of twats it's just plebeians it's the ignorant bastards of england the language that they used against brexit voters was abhorrent yes. and that's the sophisticated elite blah blah this is Dellingpole. more to come after the break with my special guest katie hopkins stay tuned for 60 second ap news headlines AP Update, I'm Diane Kepley. Questions are swirling in Washington about the contacts between Trump administration officials and the Russians. Was General Flynn directed or authorized to do what he did? What was the extent of his conversations and contacts with Russia? Who else from the Trump administration, transition, or campaign had contact with the Russians. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer and others are calling for an independent investigation to get the answers to those questions. There is pushback from President Trump. This morning he's lashing out at the news media, saying the fake news media is going crazy with what he calls their conspiracy theories and blind hatred. He adds in his tweet, the Russian connection nonsense is an attempt to cover up mistakes made in Hillary Clinton's losing campaign. Meantime, in Moscow, a Kremlin spokesman is denying reports about intercepted phone calls between intelligence officials and members of the Trump presidential campaign. AP Update. I'm- this is Delling Poll, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here once again is James Delling Poll. This is Delling Poll with my special guest, Katie Hopkins. We're talking about what we advertise. Brexit. The Brexit. What are we I, don't, I don't know what we're advertising. The, adver- gonna, the adverts are going like to go. In. Do you know what I hope is going to be? Going to be not hemorrhoid cream. I, don't have I hope they're going to advertise Reaper drones. <laughs> Reaper drones would be really <laughs> cool. And no, an attack helicopters. That's what I want advertised Can in the not slot. Be cream for I, do, oh, I have I, had them, and I, I don't wish to do there again. I don't want. But I've had. In Patigo? I've had. Um, have you had in Patigo? No, I ha- I've had. Um, I've had piles. <gasps> 
Oh, that's, oh. So, that's so not exciting. That's not sexually transmitted. I've had Bill Hartz here. That's no, that's not. Word. That's not. Oh, I need oh, something sexual. <laughs> something and something. Some. Listen, okay. it, Americans get upset about this kind of thing. Um, they no, do. no, they, they don't. Do, they do actually. They do. The, the Americans, I, God bless them, but they are. They, they're much more prudish than we are because they were founded. They were founded by by pilgrims. Yes, the etiquette they have is more. Is superior by, to sorry, ours. pilgrim fathers, Puritans. I meant. I meant to say they are. They they <laughs> they they swear less. I think oh, much less. Much less. They drink yeah, less. They don't wear vaginas. They don't. They they, they fornicate less. Yeah. Anyway, we, Brexit. <laughs> Brexit <laughs> was. As, as Segway. That's, that's known as the Segway. Delightful. It's called the seamless, it the seamless, the, the seamless the Segway. Uh, the, I don't, I don't think that there is ever going to be a, a political event as glorious no. as Brexit because I felt like I felt as a gay man must when he comes out of the closet and realizes that he can go to fisting clubs or, or whatever and his field of it be me off be himself. Okay, you know, okay. Okay, there. I did not say fisting clubs. Okay. But <laughs> what I will say is that so I suddenly re- I suddenly realized that that we are not these freaks that we are actually there are people out there mm. just like us and we are it. we are the 52%. Mm. And the reason I so my house with family items and, and hamsters and assorted memorabilia and and mothers and fathers and things is in the West Country. And the reason I love it so much is not only to have the conversations like the hairdressers and, and other things that just happen in the West Country, is the fact that I live outside of this place. And I live there when I'm there at the weekend, 52%. And I come into London and it's the 48 Don't and I you feel hate, that divide so tight. Don't you so hate strongly. the 48%? I, I, I come them. into London, I look at you, them. I think you ghastly, ghastly. scum. They're You've all nice benefited jackets. from quantitative easing. Oh, you're, yeah. all, you're all fans of Mark Carney. You all want to prop up this establishment, this Corrupt venal stuff. It's more the media. It's all the sneering BBC. No, I hate them all. I'm an I'm an all-purpose hater. I think you 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 can't just hate the media and not hate Mark Carney. I don't don't, don't hate bankers. No, no, you hate Mark. No, I'm not hate Mark. Well, you should. Can I help you? No. Learn to, I, I'm going to give you lessons. Uh, 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 no, no, no. I'm not going to give it you now. Afterwards, oh. I, I'm just giving you a proper talking to about Mark Carney. <laughs> um, I mean, do you hate George Soros? <laughs> I think he's the most evil man in the world. He's, he's making a name for himself as the most evil, despicable man in he, the planet. He really is. So, anyway, Brexit, we both felt totally... I mean, London, yeah, protests and oh. things as well now. I, so sick of protests. My only regret about re- Brexit, and it's quite a big, a big bitter regret, actually, Did is you not vote to leave? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, regret. right. I voted <laughs> remain. <laughs> I'm a shy Brexiter. No, that wasn't that. No, the thing that upset me was that on the day of the election... I looked at the the odds on Betfair. Oh, I see. Nine to one, you could have I got. And I had a feeling in my bones because I'd been out. To, I live in Northamptonshire, and I'd been out out into the to the yeah, yeah. nearest town. I, I went into the garden centre, and I and, and I, I I always like striking up conversation with real people, you know, to show how down with the, down with the ordinary down people I am. Well. Uh, down with the ordinary people I am. And I talked to this this enormous oh, enor- good, the enormous know? fat the enormous fat woman in the garden <laughs> centre, and I said, so what do you, how do you think it's going to go? And, and she said, well, I haven't met anyone uh, who's going to vote Remain. Oh, there was one person. Yeah. He's a doctor. He came in here the other day, and she said, everyone else, yeah. every conversation she'd ever had, everyone was voting <laughs> voting out. So down my neck of the woods, West Country, Cornwall, all at leaving, all out, 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 and then signs that I had in my garden, vote leave. They were nicked relentlessly, so I had five signboards stolen, and that was sufficient for me to feel like I was winning. We replaced them uh, religiously, but I always felt like we would do it. I also felt that I see everything, being a man, I see everything in terms of war. And I just looked at the breakdown of the kind of people who voted, who voted, who voted Remain, the kind of people who voted Brexit, and I thought, who would you want on your side in the war? You'd want the kind of the county regiments, the yeom- the yeomanry. You'd want the the the, the, the gnarly the, ones. You'd want the Geordies. You'd want the Geordies. You'd want the people from Sunderland. The the, the all these battalions you from. Want the Welsh. You see, do, that's do, do you think you? No, no. The Welsh, hence they voted to remain. Remember, mm-hmm. that's an interesting point. Yeah, and the Scots. And in the English Civil War, I wonder how would it have broken. Do you think the Royalists would have been the the? I, well, I, I do think there was a very clear, the very clear divide that existed before Brexit still remains. And I also enjoyed it was like a 
a delicious nectar watching the faces in, in large screen of the BBC commentating team having to say that they were putting up that Brexit was the result and to watch that go up and watching them in agony because they simply... And what was profound was the fact that the disbelief was so profound for them. They were just totally. absolutely... Couldn't believe, could they, the rest of the country thought differently to them. They still I have know to that. say... They still don't realise. This is the main reason, almost the reason I want Donald Trump to win. He's going to win. Do you think he will? He will. If you take uh, the UK and spin it 90 degrees or uh, to the to the left, you end up with the picture of Brexit. So you have Manhattan and LA. They are the big kind of Hillary Clinton grounds. Yeah. And then the rest of the country, the kind of hub of America, loves Don Donald. And I think this last bout of shootings, bombings, pipe bombings, etc., in New York have done a fantastic favour. I think Trump, Trump must have arranged those bombings. I cannot oh, see any, a, any, any other way. That's <laughs> slander. I, but when I said in the morning that those bombs went off the night, night prior, I said, you know, this is a win for Trump. Actually, Katie, can I just correct you there? They're not called bombs. They're called explosions. Explosive devices. Explosive devices. You'll find actually they were just interesting uh, pressure cooker-shaped alarm clocks. Do, so, look, James, do you think it's do you think it's still too early to speculate on the motives yeah, of I the person? Who I think it's too early to use the word terror. I think it's too early to use the word Ahmed, Ahmar, or Mohammed. He wasn't called Mohammed, was he? No, he's called it's called Ahmed. Ah Ahmad. Which is no but his father was called Mohammed and his brother because, of course, when you're stuck for name choices, I say always go Mo. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, I, 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 I would agree to you. I reckon between oh, you, between you, but sorry, between them, Black Lives, say, Black, 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 Black Lives Matter, and 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 the Umar, or at least the extremist branch, um, are going to are going to want it for Trump. Absolutely. If you had to equate the Bob Geldof of Trump's time, Bill De Blasio, the ridiculous six foot whatever. You know, gigantosaur of New York. He will. He is the Bob Geldof. You are quite right. Actually, let, let's explain that for, for people who don't know the reference. Uh, oh, the, that was the, so the worst. The worst. The key moment. So uh, the, the moment that the, the Remainers lost the break, lost the campaign was Bob, Bob Geldof, Geldof on that boat flicking bee signs to the is fishermen. He know, is he known in America? I hope. I, hope I not, think he is. Who come up? He sailed the boats from New Lynn half that fleet's been destroyed and he was flicking V signs yeah. at them from a millionaire's Bob boat. Geldof was on a pleasure a, a, a pleasure cruiser with all the lovers all the London lovers and they were all sneering at these Rachel's fishermen Rachel was mortified she was ever on that boat she's really Is she? beside herself yeah but what was she doing supporting Remain well well that's another Johnson fallout but uh, she was beside herself that she was ever near Bob but Bill de Blasio this ridiculous kind of Gulliver of New York amongst his little li Lilliputians. Yes. The liberal Lilliputians. Lilliputians. Lilliputians, merci mille fois. Um, he is Bob, and the parallel is, is precise, I think. Re for refusing to say the word terror, yes. refusing to speculate on the source, re refusing to link these attacks all happening within 24 hours within a five mile radius, you know, in a gay district and a Marine Corps, you know, charity race refusing to link those. How stupid, how patronising is it of the American people towards the American people? Probably? Since we have effortlessly moved, effortlessly moved the conversation now on to terror, terror, on terror, terror, yes, no, pigeons, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 I've, now I've been pulled up short terror. by the, the pigeon references. Terror, terror. Yeah. Again, this is one of those issues where I just find it kind of gobsmacking how few people tell it like it is about the threat from from Islam. Now, obviously, part of that is cowardice. People don't want to get their heads chopped off. They don't want to. I mean, Bataclan. Look at what happened to Jesse Hughes, the the guy from Queens of the Stone Age, when he talked about what had happened at Bataclan. And instead of being treated with sympathy and understanding by the sort of the liberal, the, the music, the, the music press turned against him, and and he had to sort of start retracting and and, and feeling embarrassed about having said what happened. And, it's that, and that's what you see so often, James, and I find it really upsetting. Is people making a sometimes uh, brave. Um, admission perhaps or other people making a bold assertion yeah. and I think well fantastic and then obviously you see the barrage come their way which is predictable just from the kind of mob that operates because they kind of have a monopoly of thought 
Um, and then, you know, they then seeing someone retract what they said the next day. I find that really a depressing thing because I always want someone to at least stand, even if you're wrong, just stand behind what you said if you believe it. I, it's why, for me, my radio station, LBC, getting rid of Ken Livingston for something he said about a reference to Nazis. Now, I can't stand a single word that's ever come out of Ken Livingston's mouth, yeah. but you still shouldn't sack someone for their opinion if you're an opinion-led radio station, in my view. Yeah, well, totally. But I think with the terror thing, to take you back to where we were actually headed, is what's been interesting, having seen so much terror here in Europe, for America, is watching that template unfurl in exactly the same manner. So we go to, because we had deaths that they didn't, we went to candles, uh, hashtags, vigils in a public square, pray for Nice, pray for Brussels, pray for whatever, didn't we? Pray then for you light up delete a, as appropriate. Delete yeah. a, then you light up a public building, don't you? That's an important thing. Light up a, as if that's going to do anything. Then you stand shoulder to shoulder. Our politicians stand shoulder to shoulder with whoever's been attacked. And then the president or prime minister comes out and says, we will not be cowed by fear. Or we, Merkel, we will not be cowed, which is sort of what Obama's just done. And all very well if you've got 27, 24-7 security and FBI close protection. But for the average man and woman in the street, people are cowed by fear, actually. Or at least I am for my children. It's interesting. I, I, had, I had this argument only the other, other day with a chap... I shan't mention his name, but he's, I oh, mean, a, no, he's a conservative. Uh, no, I, I, won't, I won't drop a minute. I think you he's, should. he's a conservative friend of mine. And, and he, was, he was saying, well, of course, your chances of being killed by no, an I act of terrorism this. are far stand. greater than being killed in a car. Well, I say, yeah, but How hang on a second. Though, you mean far less? It's far less, far less. So, so, so your, your chances of being killed by a terrorist are far less. Far, far less far than fewer. being. Far, far less. Far smaller. Far smaller your chances. Anyway, mm. but. I quite like my car. I get into my car, I drive fast, and I think, this is fun, it gets me from A to B, I really enjoy my time in my car. I look at potential terrorists, and I think, hang on, what do you bring to the party that makes it worth my while taking the it's risk to... La- it's such a lame argument. Isn't if it? someone's about to go for that with me, I just cut them, cut them down, because how do, you, do, how, do not how, give me... Tell me how you slaughter them. Do, do not give me sort of the probability of being killed by yeah. someone I'm supposed to graciously, graciously pay taxes for to support in my country. Yeah. And the other great one I love as well is, oh yes, but Katie, uh, lots of Muslims were killed as well. Yes, but Katie, lots of Muslims were killed in the bombings as well. So look, Muslims were hurt too. And I was like, oh, brilliant, brilliant. So that's where we are. That's <laughs> multiculturalism these days. We all die together. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> well done you. You know, if that's the best argument you've got for allowing suicide bombers into our country, that we'll all die together, well, yeah. you know, bravo to blooming liberal left-wing lunatics. I don't see this one getting any better any time soon because, because the authorities are in such a state of denial about the, the root causes of it. I mean, we've still got Angela Merkel. Uh, <laughs> a little bit sad, now that her poll rate yeah, is... A, a little bit sad. She, if she could go back in time, she might have prepared more <laughs> for it. too much... Uh, who sang that? If I could... Yeah, it's a return back time, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but she doesn't seem to have been say, actually admitted yet that it was... Oh, no, her fault. I am total, to total mistake. No, no, not at all. I've, I've got a daughter. You've got a daughter. Um, one, two... two. When, when you and I were, were, were children, we used to entertain ourselves by going on by interrail cars. Did you yes. ever do it? You interrailed across <laughs> Europe. The thought of my daughter getting an interrail card and going to, so, Dad, I'm going to a, a rock festival in Sweden, or I'm going to go to Cologne. I wouldn't let these my go in an these car. countries, which, you, uh, which are full of, in of, of blonde women, sort of, sort of potential rape fodder. I don't know if you've seen the latest ad in Sweden for the new country. If not, I thoroughly commend it to any of your listeners. But it, it's called the new country. Uh, it's an ad done by Swedish government. And it's basically sort of a, a collage playing out in front of your eyes of different faces, different types of blonde lady, blonde old lady. And then at the end, it obviously ends with a, a lady in a full hijab, burqa, whatever, niqab, whatever, Punani, yeah. and, uh, and it says, new country, this is the new country, and basically the subtitle is over this, the subtext is, you need to change, your views need to change, this is the new country, and it's utterly terrifying. Which actually gives me a chance to talk about this amazing documentary I saw the other day on the birth of ABBA. <laughs> 
Do you know about about the, the story, the background oh, story no, of ABBA? Well, is it, are you not an ABBA fan? But no, I'm part of Oh, that. because you're a, because you're a man and you don't think <laughs> you can't enjoy. <laughs> Go on, go on, you're going to tell absolutely to get one of the with. greatest bands of all time. It's a bit like having something. Do you know what? Do you, do you know what country Abba came from? Oh, I'm going to go sc- something Scandinavian. Yeah, they're Swedish. Oh, they're Swedish. Scandinavian. What was fascinating about this program is you, is you saw the the Swedish folk scene from which they emerged in the in the, in the late the late sixties, and you looked at what Sweden looked like in those days, and it was as you can Beautiful. imagine totally white. Uh, all the women were hot. They had they had. Blonde, they look like you, Katie. They, 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 they <laughs> all, they, 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 they all looked, they, they, they were all, <laughs> all, all blonde. They were a kind of every red-blooded man's fantasy. Um, and the culture was innocent. And, and yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the sort of, the music was sort of, or pop, pop, well, whatever. It was, it was, it was basically very rustic and very primitive and very charming. Sort of thing you would expect in the Sw- Sweden of old. And this country has been destroyed by its own people. I love that 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 um, speech that Cicero made about the enemy at the gates. And, and the point is that the enemy at the gates, the, the people outside the gates, uh, you can see that they're, they're, they're a threat and you can deal with them. But the people, the traitor within, is far, far worse. And the, 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 the Swedes... The Swedes... Yeah, the Swedes have destroyed their own country. They've acquiesced in their destruction. But the, the, the fantastic thing and the positive we can draw from this terrific series of negatives, at which point people will want to be driving their cars off the cliffs, it's all very doom-monger, is on the 2nd of October, Austria will rerun its presidential elections because, as you will know, and there was a possibly alleged fraudulent vote. Uh, yeah, I possibly allegedly, I think. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So that's going to be the first right wing I would say to the right of the right some people would say far right but they're just labelling for fun right wing president elected in Europe and that is another domino falling I think we'll see Trump elected we'll see the uh, right wing elected in uh, Austria and I think we will see more of that coming through Europe and I think that's the positive you, you're, you, it is a positive or well, it's a sound positive you're, I, you can see it already in um, it's going to have a domino effect I think <laughs> Countries like chauvinistic countries, um, Catholic countries, often Poland. Poland's got very, very white right wing. Uh, Hungary. Oh, I, I mean, the BBC hates Hungary. The European Union wants to chuck Hungary out of the EU for saying all the wrong things. But actually, these places <laughs> are going to be. Crazy, isn't it? If you take what we talked about at the front end of this conversation about how we suffer from certain brutality on the end of the law or whatever for having views, you know. The EU wants to physically chuck a country out yes. for having the wrong views. Yes. You know, if you, if you take that as a sort of wider strategic perspective, a whole country for saying the wrong thing. I think there's probably a hint of jealousy there, don't you? I, I think Germany must look at Hungary with its an, <laughs> and think, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. <laughs> have, have a bit of popularity. Yeah. Populist yeah. politics. I mean, the, it's, it's ironic, I think, um, that the qualities that made countries. Um, you look at what Poland did to its... Well, well, a lot of countries did to their Jewish populations in the war. That same chauvinism, which was despicable, I think, in the Second World War, is probably going to save them mm. now. Because Absolutely. they're not going to tolerate... They're not going to tolerate yeah, these... these I, I had a massive rant on the radio the other day about um, Israel, because I'm a super Israel fan. Yeah, so am I. I, 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 I love, love Israel. I love their military kind of... Strong Have you been there? Approach. No, I'm desperate. To oh, go. I'm going to live the Katie, can we, can we get invited out there and, yes. and, and, and to go I'm out with you? I want to go with the IDF and shoot and... and <laughs> no, don't say what you're just about to say. But right. what your point is, yeah. is we're both strong admirers of Israel and its military force. Yes. I used to love the spokesperson um, for Benjamin Netanyahu. I oh, I like him as well. It's my crush. Uh, um, what's his name? I can see him, but I can't see him. He's got an American him. accent. And, 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 uh, yeah, he's great. He's So he, I love him very much. But also, they're building a subterranean wall against the Palestinian border to stop people to come. I mean, they amazing. Are. You you throw a rocket at Israel, it will bomb your house and the house of your family. Immense. You know, I love the way they operate. They just they have the right principles, I think, for me. And at the security at the airport, they don't even allow. They do screening. You're not even allowed to purchase a ticket for a plane if they suspect you have a link with terror. Oh, God. You know, we have to oh, sit in love Terminal <laughs> 4 and play spot the terrorists. I know, I know, They I don't know. do that. This is why you, you realise that you and I are not qualified to be 
fully paid National. up members of, of of the alt right because oh, there is because because no because I, I I love the lots of aspects of the alt right but I I can't do the anti semitism thing I don't get that oh I, I, no Israel for me is the the oh. ultimate powerhouse of how to deal with terror and people trying to get at your nation I love them. Yeah, absolutely. I know. <laughs> it's 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 a country run by people like us. It is, darling. That it means is. we should go. So, I, I, let's let's use the last bit because I wanted to talk to you about um, the recent trial of Gaza, Paul Gascoigne. I mean, you're probably not a football fan. I I wasn't a football fan, but Gaza was a, was a legend. He was a sporting legend. He's now slightly past his best got drink problems slightly past slightly, well, I was, I was like being describing my dead mother-in-law as a useful <laughs> babysitter <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> nice one nice one Katie um, the say Paul Gaz is trying to earn the crust this probably, probably, a, probably take, pay, pay off his whiskey bills yeah, or whatever going, going on a, going on, a, on a tour of an evening with Gaza and you can imagine the kind of people who go to see an evening with Gaza they're Basically, football. Looking for a laugh. Looking, absolutely. And he spots a black bouncer in the audience. He's and he's a security guy. Yeah. Oh, it's his own security mm-hmm. guy. His own. No. On and says, and, and says, uh, what does he say? Oh, it makes a joke about being able to see him when he smiled or something yeah. such. I haven't read smile, it. Quote, smile. Quote. I think smile so I can see. Smile, something. Something. Which is which actually is a sort of. Tr- it belongs in the in the old-fashioned comedy tradition. I think I think Bernard Manning used to make that joke about so, that sort of before. Bernard Manning, Jim Davis, isn't it? The sort of old school acknowledging practice. somebody's skin colour in an affectionate way, in the same way that in the army people people, people call people white would be called chalky or, white or, or, or ginger say, my nose, or, or a ex- major yell that I could eat an apple through a tennis racket with my teeth. Ex- <laughs> exactly, that, which like, is quite a good gag to be fair. Uh, I, I would have got. Have I would. I would totally. You'd have been shredded. I would totally get that. Made it past first And you accept that because that's part of uh, uh, particularly male banter I think it's, well, it's very much me, about yeah, about looking at people's weak spots and it's and, and self, self-deprecation, self-deprecation. so suddenly somebody we don't know who reports Gaza to the police for hate crime and rather than going well, I'm sorry but this is a really trivial matter it's none of our business the the police prosecute this. Well, there you go and that's the point I made earlier about the CPS uh, me wishing certain individuals police forces would stand up and take a stand prior to things progressing and saying stop this nonsense and what I've noticed very much so and in particular with personal kind of uh, law cases, court cases, suits brought against me for things I've said or written is that the lawyers now are going to find the victims. So for example, were I a law firm known for um, litigation, I would go and find the gentleman, the security guy, and say, do you realise... You touched my knee then, Katie. I was was rather excited. It was was good, yeah. It was good. Yeah, I did. Yes, sorry, sorry, come on. Uh, You're way distracted. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) Fool of a man. You have have another feeling if you want. God's sake, concentrate is they will find that uh, security guy and they will say, do you realise you could make this much money? And of course that's what you get all the time. And the security guard made a thousand quid out of this but by saying in court that he'd gone home and he'd wept and for that how humiliating for a thousand quid I wouldn't do that I would rather eat worms I would I would I'd rather have sex with Milo Yiannopoulos. Actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't stoop that low. No, sorry. You, also, he expects to be paid. Yes, he, yes. He, oh God, it yeah. Post truth. I read somewhere the other day oh. a post truth revision of Milo's family, which was basically lies. Do you know what, Katie? I I really feel after this conversation, we've got like about twenty more shows to do because because you are <laughs> you are ham, you are unfiltered. Yes. You are appalling. Yes. And I love you very much. And yeah, I think, I fact. think, I think this is a great <laughs> first year. And I think you lots. Like, you sound like any of my husbands. I think lots of people will be listening to this and saying, "That's my kind of woman. I want to see more well, of her. I want to have with sex with her sex metaphorically." Yes, one are usually actually. Actually, actually okay. On, on actual, until they see me, like, oh Jesus. No, I think you know. That's we would, Katie, because. But on the radio, people tend to say, "I really like, I like that program." And then I found out it was Katie Hopkins. So there's a funny kind isn't of that, reverse. Isn't oh, that yeah. interesting? Yeah. We could go on forever. We're not going to. That's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to Dellingpole with me, James Dellingpole. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe on iTunes. You can download new episodes every Thursday on Podcast One. You can also listen to it at Breitbart.com. Thank you so much again for listening. And remember to subscribe on iTunes. And don't forget, give me the five-star review I so totally deserve. Thank you, my friends. Till next week. Bye-bye.